Hey gang, it's your boy. And it's time to talk about our favorite topic, feminism. With all the hype around Marvel's Captain Bitchface and its seemingly copied marketing playbook of Ghostbusters 2016. <sighs> On top of all of this, am I saying that I hate white dudes? No, I'm not. But what I am saying is, I do not need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. And I'm also saying I don't hate white dudes. We're going to take a look at how feminism is continuing the trend of fem ham fisting its ideology into geek culture, which is now a part of the normie sphere of popular media. But, 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 Richard, you're just being a misogynist and are clearly afraid of women taking up space in movies and comic books, you friggin' incel. And that's what they will say when Captain can't act her way out of a paper bag ultimately makes the MCU take a hit in the box office due to them wanting to make a big feminist movie. And I'm also saying I don't hate white dudes. When something like only one in five women will willingly declare themselves as feminists and the rest of them try to distance themselves from it as much as possible. And no, I'm not averse to leading female characters in movies. <coughs> Lead a battle angel. <clears throat> Go see it, it's a great movie. But we're not going to talk about Captain Cuntwaffle this time, though there are some comparisons we can make between it and the model behind the movie we are talking about. Scooby-Doo and the Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost. Yes, the latest entry in this Hanna-Barbera IP movie lineup is dripping with autistic feminism. Like Marvel's big feminist film in Ghostbusters 2016, it is chocked full of feminist dog whistles. Pun intended. First off, it's based on a dead storyline that killed the original series, and it's blatantly unapologetic in its delivery. I watched this piece of cancer-infected animation with my kids the other night, who managed to get two giggles each out of the entire story. But that makes total sense when you think about it. Much like the She-Ra reboot, this animated adventure wasn't made for kids. It was made for the NPCs that watched the TV series, The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, when they were kids and are now full-grown snowflakes. The story starts with the gang chasing down a suspect in their latest case, where we first see a blatant reference to Fred's toxic masculinity. We got him! Follow me! Um, shouldn't we booby-trap the doorway in case he tries to escape? Daphne, I think I know when and when not to booby-trap a doorway. <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> they capture the guy, who they believe is behind the ghost escapades, but are told by an unnamed law enforcement officer who destroys the immersion of the Scooby-Doo experience instantly with references of criminal negligence and harassment that they've got the wrong guy. And I would have gotten away with it too if you'd left the meddling to these kids. <sighs> Hold the phone. You mean we were wrong? The term is criminally negligent. Criminal? How many times do I have to tell you, kids? Mystery solving is a tough business, even for the pros. There's no room for mistakes. You're almost 18. After that, if somebody like Morgan here presses harassment charges, you're looking at prison time. If I see you driving that mystery machine of yours one more mile, I'm putting you away. He even sounds like he's written by an SJW. Also, we do have a leash law in this town, so, you know. Thanks. Smug smirks and all. Afterward, Fred and the gang start selling off their gear, including the mystery machine, so that gender norms in the show's ridiculous past story arc can at the same time be resurrected and effectively killed off all at once. This just doesn't feel right. I love my mystery machine. I feel like I just sold part of myself. Then, a crystal ball at the yard sale begins transmitting signals from Vincent Price, calling out for help. Oh man, I know that glow. Shaggy, Shaggy, is that you? I've been trying to reach you on this thing for months. Daphne, Shaggy, Scooby-Doo, where are you? After filling in Fred and the others regarding the ill-advised plot of The Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, Daphne dons her feminist-approved outfit to the surprise of her former love interest. How did I ever think this was practical? This is insane. I can't believe you never told us about this. Yes.
What do you think? Whoa, who are you? And because the mystery machine is gone, Daphne shows off her aptly named pussy mobile in a humble brag that could be described as femsplaining. You have a van too? It's not a van. It's a strategic all-terrain mobile command unit. It looks like a van. It was a van. Then Vincent had a few upgrades installed. MM? Don't worry, Freddy. There can be only one mystery machine. What does it stand for then? Let me guess. The mystery machine? Um, no, but that's way better. Let's call it that. Okay, whatever. Remembering that, for some reason, Fred can't drive stick, he gets hip checked in between the two female leads. Everybody hop in and, uh, oh, wait, wait. This is a stick. I can't drive a stick. Everybody in. We're burning daylight. Once they're well on their way, Daphne notices that they're being followed by a ridiculously designed mystery car with doubled up front wheels. Now I don't know why feminist inspired vehicles in fiction often have doubled up wheels in some configuration, but it's just stupid. Please stop doing this. After arriving at Vincent's vacation home, Fred gets treated like a bitch as Daphne further asserts her leadership of the group. Come, Come on, on gang. gang, let's... Let's follow Daphne inside. No way. I'm with you, Scooby-Doo. Like, no way are we stepping through those doors. Huh? Me? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Complete with a burn by Scooby-Doo. Okay, uh, say, guys, would you do it for a couple of... <clears throat> one. You start with one, and then we haggle. Look, I I'm gonna say one Scooby snack, you're gonna say three, and then we settle on two, okay? Let's just cut to the chase. <laughs> like easiest negotiation ever. Thanks, Daphne. Uh, I'm Fred, not Daphne. Uh-huh. They haven't mentioned that all males are creeps yet, so let's get that out of the way. This place gives me the creeps. I thought you didn't believe in creeps. I'm starting to believe in a couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if looks could kill. The gang splits up so we can get a peek at Fred's further reluctant release of his leadership. All we have to do is follow the glow, and we'll find Vincent. Fingers crossed. Come on. Oops. Oh, sorry, my fault. No, my you fault. first. Go ahead. I'll follow you. Fred gets treated to some further misandry without having his contributions recognized because fuck that guy. I just didn't want you to feel like I was moving in on your turf. Which I am. Mm. Look, I've been through all this already when you were away. I know how to see the whole situation from above and how to plan the next move. I'm fine. Well, I'm not. I mean, there must be something I can do. Don't do anything. But Daphne, I only want to... No, I mean, don't move. I think I see something. Follow that up with a dog whistle about mansplaining, and the ideology is in full, unabashed display. Once Scooby has the scent, he'll lead us to the source of the- Like, I don't need it Fred Fredsplain to me, Velma. I'm in. Let's go. The 13th ghost makes an appearance, and is told where to go by Daphne, because she don't need no man. Except when her ass gets saved by Vincent Price. Give it to me! It's not here. If you want it, you're gonna have to go find it yourself. Where did he go? The gang board Vincent's plane, where we witness an unnecessary mistreatment of Fred as Trans Scooby makes him pick up his in-flight snacks off the floor for being a gluttonous male. Peanuts or cookies? Uh, one of each? Oh my. <laughs> Apropos of nothing, Fred has to tell Daphne that he doesn't mind being chauffeured, even though he never voiced that preference earlier. See, Daphne? I don't mind being chauffeured, as long as it's a highly skilled professional at the wheel. Uh-huh. Say, have you met the pilot yet? You should introduce yourself. Huh? Don't mind if I do. But this is just ultimately another setup for a bad feminist joke about flight attendants. <clears throat> uh, stewardess? 
That flight attendant. Whatever you say, toots. Geez, I'm surprised Shaggy didn't smack Scooby on the ass for a bit of intersectional outrage. Once the plane lands in the Himalayas, Fred's inability to drive vehicles must further be cemented. Hang on! I got it! I got it this time! And his character further emasculated when he and Velma are sent to look for the ghost chest at the local post office while Daphne and the rest of the gang search the temple. Velma, Fred, take the mystery machine into town to look for Shaggy's... <sighs> scare package. After arriving at the post office, we get to see Fred's continued degradation as he struggles with his newly foisted upon lack of identity. I don't know what my role is anymore. Huh? Huh. Okay, that was weird. I'll go check it out. Wait, it feels like a trap. Oh, Velma. <laughs> I think I would know if I was walking... <laughs> oh. And of course, we must all be reminded that Fred is a boob who can't drive stick, or apparently anything else for that matter. Give her a test run. You can drive stick, right? Of course. Uh... <laughs> just kidding. It practically drives oh. itself. Oh. <laughs> now, what can I interest you in? Back at the temple, the 13th ghost has secured the ghost chest, and is pursued by Daphne, while we're reminded repeatedly just how strong and independent she is. Come on, gang. I'm gonna miss this. Despite this hammered home trope, the ghost gets away with the chest, and shortly after the gang are reunited, Daphne starts doubting herself as a leader. No, Fred, it's over. The doors and windows are frozen shut. By the time we make it in, the chest will already be open. <sighs> Maybe the sheriff was right. We're out of our depth. Oh, uh, and here are your keys? <sighs> you keep them. I don't know what made me think I was cut out to be a leader in the first place. After a prep talk for each of the gang, we see Fred fully embrace his role as a feminist ally and quite literally cheerleader for the team now that he's given up on ever becoming the leader again, even after Daphne gives up and encourages him to. As for you? Don't bother. Look at yourself right now, leading your friends back from the cliff's edge. You were born for this. You're heroic and kind and above all, honest. Oh, really? Is that what you think? Well, th then it's time you knew the truth, all of you. Last summer I went to cheerleading camp. But now I know what my job is, what it's always been. I'm the one who believes with all his heart in the rest of you. What is going on? Fred, I can't death. You're the one who drives stick. You're the one with the plan, who always sees everything from above and knows exactly what the next move should be. Holding her up as a literal fucking pedestal. Now that is a true feminist ally, kids. Er, I mean, kids in grown-up bodies with a ton of student debt who are desperately trying to get laid by women who you'd actually have to sexually assault to get some. From above. Okay, gang, we're going to the airport. The group splits up again, so we can all be reminded that Fred is an ineffectual dunce who doesn't know how to drive stick, because that's the theme. Get, uh, get it to my... Oh, uh, that's not the clutch. You mean this is not the... It's the emergency brake. That mm -hmm. pedal over there is the clutch. Not a word about this to Daphne. Uh-huh. Eventually, Daphne solves the mystery with the help of Velma, because the three male characters are, of course, completely useless. The 13th ghost is unmasked, and justice is... served? Back on the plane and on their way home, Daphne checks in with Fred after his total character transformation because women love talking and shit. Everything okay? Yeah, just thinking about our impending retirement. Well, as my last official act as leader, I'm calling it off. Huh? This is what we do best, Freddy. I'm not ready to give it up just because we made one tiny mistake. But we need a Scooby-Doo shot for the ending. So Trans Shaggy comes by with the snack tray. Imitation yak jerky, anyone? Hang on a second. Shaggy, if you're back here, who's flying the plane? 
<laughs> well, that was a cancerous ideological dumpster fire. Anywho, parents, I beg of you, please don't buy or stream this direct-to-video crap fest. You and your kids will like yourself just a little more for not doing so. As always, thanks for watching, gang, and be sure to check out my other work here on YouTube and bit you. Don't forget to drop by my subscribe star page and become a subscriber today. As always, I've been your boy, Dick Richard Rizzo. You've all been great, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.